Hi everyone, Dave here at Byron Lee RV in Eureka, Missouri. Today, we're gonna to take a look at the Passport 219BH travel trailer behind me. But first, I just wanna say thank you very much for watching. If you haven't already done so, if you like all things RV, be sure to check out the rest of our YouTube channel, subscribe, click the bell icon, you'll be notified when we put up new videos like this. We go live sometimes, we do things like Byron Lee RV University and stuff, it's very, very cool. Check it out, also you can like us on Facebook and follow us on Instagram and Twitter. Keep up with all the latest news and videos here at Byron Lee RV. Now, let's talk about the Keystone passport behind me. This is the 219BH. This is going to be, I say this, I feel like I say this in every video, but you know, one of the things we do here at Byerly RV is when we choose what products to carry, it is based on value. What is value? Value is what do I get for my money, right? And we feel like the passport is one of these vehicles that just the value exceeds the cost, okay? And that's that's when you know you have a winner. Um, and so stick with me outside. We'll do the outside first and then we'll do the inside. First of all, this is the SL series of the Passport. There's an SL series and a GT series. The SL series is a lighter, lesser expensive version. Um, and this fits right in. The 219BH is one of our most popular floor plans. Lots to talk about. We're gonna start over actually on what I call the business side, um, which is the side of the vehicle where we plug in our electric and our water and things like that. We're actually gonna go all the way to the back back here you guys because uh, I'm gonna start with and only because I'm just gonna go down one side and down the other so we don't miss anything so we're gonna start right here with a black tank flush out okay now that I own my own camper I know how important this is these a black tank flush out is absolutely awesome when it comes to just keeping the entire system well maintained and clean um, uh, this and a clear elbow and it's just that's it's good so this is a what a black tank flush out is is uh, we've got you know of course a, a gray tank and a black tank on board and a fresh tank a fresh tank for fresh water and then a gray tank for soapy water from our sink and shower and then the black tank is waste strictly from the commode all right we use a chemical in there and we use special rv toilet paper and everything like that but when you dump it the black tank flush out think about like a dishwasher spinner inside there and it's going to spin around inside there and it's going to wash out that tank and just it's, these are awesome um, when you have time to do it it's great so things you're, you're going to find that the passport is not an entry-level camper this thing has a lot of features that people ask for when they come in to buy their second camper. Okay, I want one, but it's gotta have this, this, and this. I'm, I don't wanna take that, that thing and stick it down the toilet anymore inside and clean out my black tank, I want that. You know, so lots of stuff like that. So uh, we'll keep going. Um, we've got what we call shore power right here. Uh, we're plugged into an extension cord and an adapter here. So actually when you do that, you can run everything but your air, right? Um, We'll keep going with, this is one other little thing I just wanna point out over here. This is the exhaust from inside uh, for the kitchen. So when you turn on the kitchen exhaust, it's actually an exhaust to the outside. And I say it that way because not everybody does that. Some of them just recirculate it, right? Um, now, in this front storage compartment here, we've got a great pass-through storage compartment. And what you're looking at right now is the solar charge controller for the 200 watt solar panels that are on the roof. So we've got a 200 watt solar panel on the roof and when you have a solar panel and a battery, the charge controller that you saw right there is what goes in between them, it monitors the battery and that way you don't overcharge it and things like that, it manages that. Uh, so this actually has that whole system set up, it's awesome. Um, so that can keep your battery maintained when you're not using it and stuff. Um, and also provide you 12 volt power uh, when you're not plugged in if you're gonna stay in it and boondock camping off grid, right? Now this storage compartment here has a lot of other stuff too, not just for storage, but we have a nice little water compartment here. Um, this gives me a city water connection where I connect my hose when I have water at my campsite and I can leave it connected. It comes in through this little port right here up through the bottom so I can keep the door closed. I can fill my fresh tank right here. I have access to the hot and cold running water right here. This is one of two access points on the outside for the water system. I have a coaxial cable behind this little blue plug for my satellite on the roof and then I also have my key TV which gives me cable satellite and a boosted antenna on the roof. Not satellite, satellite pre-wired. Not There's no dish or anything on here. That's all extra but it's all pre-wired. You do have to have certain wiring for satellite um, if you want to run a dish and stuff like that. This is pre-wired for that. Again, not every camper is like that, right? Also in there was the cable that we use. Uh, this is our power cable that we plug in back where we had our extension cord plugged in, right? Now, up front, uh, there's a spot for our batteries. We've got a nice power tongue jack right here so we don't have to crank this thing. Um, a lot of value, more value in this than you think. Oh, one other thing that was in that storage compartment, guys, that I almost forgot about, uh, the, the, uh, there's switches in there for these power stabilizers okay this side you can actually see the motor and everything on these things power stabilizers front and rear so you just hit the button they come down if one hits the ground before the other it waits for the other one uh, but uh, really nice uh, runs off battery and stuff like that um, just so think about that you know on your passport here 
when you're unhooking at your campsite, you're going to find your spot and then you're going to use your power tongue jack and then you're going to hit another button and your jacks are going to come down and then you're going to hit another button on this huge awning that's going to come out that we're going to look at you know and you're done it's easy you don't have to crank anything however as we know sometimes things like i don't know maybe the battery's dead or something maybe something's failed maybe there's a problem somewhere okay well that's okay too because passport provides you with the different cranks this crank right here will actually run those power stabilizers up and down if there is a failure of battery switch or something like that I've got the same thing right here. This will actually do the power tongue jack up front. And then this is a hose that goes to that connection we saw on the other side of this compartment and also to the connection we're going to see. I also want to point out in here that the lighting is motion detecting lighting. We've actually got this outside and inside the camper, we'll see. And the size of the storage compartment, you know, because, or it's, well, the size of the door, all right, because it doesn't matter how big a storage compartment is if the door's not big enough to put things in, right? This door's wide enough to put larger chairs and tables and things like that in here. Um, nice, uh, secure latching with magnetic holds there, okay? Um, as we move along on the outside, you will see, you know, this is kind of cool. So the 219BH doesn't have a slide out. So it's not uncommon when you don't have a slide out to put a dinette on this side and the kitchen on the other side. A lot of times it's flip-flop because you don't put, it's easier to put a dinette in a slide out than a kitchen. The kitchen has power and plumbing and all that, right? So having my dinette right here gives me this big window out into my campsite, which is right here, right? Um, I've got aluminum wheels, all right? This is nice because they last forever. You'll see that they're this uh, spread on the axles right there, okay? That's for stability. There's probably nothing out here that tows better than a passport. Um, if you think about that, your axle is your pivot point for your weight, right? And so people like a double axle because it takes that pivot point away a little bit. Well, if you spread those tires apart, you create this kind of platform for this thing to ride on, all right? So very, very stable. These, I love the way these things tow uh, when properly matched with the vehicle, right? Um, now, I've got a nice little outside kitchen that notice is under this big awning. I've got an awning. It goes all the way from my entry door, covers my entry door all the way to the back and covers my outside kitchen. I've got outside speakers up here, right? And then I've got a little fridge here. And then I've got a two burner stove. And I've got that other second access to that inside plumbing. So again, tons of features here on the 219BH and that's just on the outside. Let's go take a look at the inside. Okay, everyone, inside the Passport 219BH, there's just as many features as there were outside or more. So you gotta stick with me here. Um, this is one of those things where I say this a lot. It's, it's not just one thing. It's the sum of many little things, like on the outside, all the things we just saw, and on the inside, all the things we're about to see. But before that, I want to talk actually about the manufacturer, Keystone RV. Uh, that's obviously part of it, too. It's just as much who builds it, right? Well, Keystone RV is the largest manufacturer of towable campers in the U.S. when you add up all the different lines that they make. And the Passport is celebrating 50 years okay they've been building passports for 15 years guys that's a long time uh, especially in the RV business especially for an ultralight travel trailer because 20 years ago there weren't ultralight travel trailers so this is one of the ones that was one of the first ones built and has been being built the longest which means they've been improving it and improving it and improving it, it also means that it's built in the same building by the same people for many many years which gives us a better finished product usually because they're not figuring it out, because it takes a while to figure it out. Uh, we've had plenty of new brands, you know, um, and it takes a little bit. So these guys have not only figured it out, typically Passport is, they, these guys set the bar for um, what other people are trying to do. So uh, let's just start, we'll do the same thing we kind of did outside, we'll go around the inside um, and uh, try not to miss anything. We'll start with the monitor panel because they do a real good job here. This is a shared monitor panel, what I mean by that is we don't actually have two black tanks and two gray tanks on the 219BH, uh, but it allows them to use the same monitor panel on all their different units. We do have our gas and electric on the water heater right up here, the water pump, porch, ceiling lights. Um, this is a motion light right here, by the way, guys. So your entry lights, motion light. Uh, we have our awning switch up here. And nice and high up, which is good, too. Uh, nothing wrong. That, that's what we really want. Um, the entertainment center, okay? This is AM, FM, stereo. This has got a uh, HDMI input on it, a USB input on it. It's got Bluetooth. I can connect my phone and listen to my... Uh, my songs on my phone. You can see zone one, zone two, because remember outside, we saw outside speakers, right? Uh, so we do outside, inside, both, or neither, or whatever. Um, now, 
Below that, in our entryway, we have this lighting uh, that can be used as, like, you know, at nighttime when you've got your campfire going outside and things like that, you don't need a bunch of light in here, you know, because uh, you don't want your eyes to have to keep readjusting. You turn just that little light on right there and it'll light your entryway at night or it serves as a great night light for folks that are in here too. Um, now, on our way around, uh, speaking of folks that are in here, we have extra sleeping. We've got the two bunks in back. We'll see in a moment. We have a nice booth dinette. This does convert to sleeping. Now, this is very useful storage underneath here, right? Well, look at this. Man, it like just keeps coming. I don't know that you could put a longer drawer underneath there. So instead of having to lift the cushion, lift the panel to get to this, I can just pull the drawer out, okay? This is one of those things that, you know, uh, when you look at its competition, it's not necessarily like that. I've got my nice cabinetry above, plenty of storage, my TV. This does come with a TV. It's already on a bracket. There's an antenna on the roof. We've got USB and um, obviously regular outlets right here in the dinette area. Um, the uh, thermostat, this is a digital wall thermostat that operates my air conditioner and my furnace from one spot. You know, even though this is not the biggest trailer, we have ducted air conditioning in here and we have ducted heat, okay? So there's a lot of stuff this size that doesn't do that, right? It's just got the air conditioner up there and it just blows because it's really kind of only one room. But that's what I mean when I said earlier that this is not an entry level trailer. You know, you, we keep seeing that because again, it's full of improvements and things that people want. On the bunks, for example, each bunk has a window. We've got, this is really, really cool about the bunks. Um, and of course they have outlets and USBs, but the bottom bunk here, you know, you'll see top bunk, bottom bunk, and then below we have some storage. And there's a door back here because this bottom bunk folds up, you guys. And this, that's a door from the outside in, obviously. And this allows me to put, as you can see, big items in here. I can put bikes and stuff in here. This is like totally awesome. Um, some of us may not want to have our bikes necessarily outside in the elements and things like that or whatever. It's a secure location. It doesn't have to be a bike. I could put a grill in here. I could put all kinds of, I don't know. I could put all kinds of stuff in here, but that's the idea, right? Um, you can never have too much storage and the more versatile it is, the better you can see this theme of able to put larger items in here, right? Even in the drawers, like, you know, there's another, oh, by the way, just there's another drawer here uh, underneath the other dinette bench, but you know, um, the bathroom. So even with the double, I say double, like double size, you know, double over double or adult size bunks, we've got a great bathroom back here, you guys. Uh, nice shower, it's got a foot flush commode. We've got a nice shower with the nice, I like this tub surround that has the shelves and stuff like that. This, I, this is a retractable shower curtain. I think this is really cool. It looks, I mean, I, I've never actually used one of these, I don't know, but boy, it, it, I love the way it doesn't overlap. I mean, this is, that's cool, very cool. Um, sink, I've got my medicine cabinet that they built. They didn't just bolt a plastic one on there, of course. There's even a little window in here, which is great uh, to help ventilate with the fan and stuff. Um, that, that's actually pretty awesome. And some extra storage underneath the sink. Now, this here, this is something that Passport has been doing since their inception, you guys. This has hanging storage if I need it. I've got shelves in here, right? Well, the shelves come out. And then if I need more hanging storage for this trip, I can use it for that. Or if I need more pantry space, I can use it for that. Or a combination of the two, right? With a couple drawers underneath. Um, this Passport 219BH is equipped with an RV refrigerator. You know, I say it that way, you guys, because nowadays, you know, who knows? Uh, they could have to switch appliances. So when you watch these videos, there's always a possibility that an appliance might be slightly different uh, depending on what is available at the time. Um, but this is a really nice Norcold RV fridge, which means it works on gas and electric. Guys, we have an RV fridge video uh, that you can check out that'll explain refrigerators. Uh, but there's a lot of folks that are looking for this um, because it'll run on LP. You've got the battery connected to a solar panel, so that'll help charge the battery. It doesn't need much juice to, it uh, doesn't need much 12 volt power <laughs> to run the refrigerator. And it doesn't need much propane, frankly, either to run this refrigerator. Uh, so as far as off grid fridge goes, the RV fridge is a great refrigerator, probably the best. Now it does, you know, again, watch the fridge video and you'll see more about that. Moving on, we've got a nice stainless steel microwave, the hood. Remember this exhaust to the outside when I turn that on. I've got a really nice three burner range with a nice oven underneath. This has the lights and everything like that. So, uh, ooh, there's the oven light. I, 
ooh, there's the oven light. You're like, why is he so excited about an oven light? Well, if you guys haven't been doing this that long, it wasn't that long ago, we didn't have oven lights. <laughs> I mean, this is like a luxury for some of us. So very, very cool there. We've got nice seamless countertops, lots of windows in here, guys. I mean, if there's one thing you notice is there's lots of windows that I can open and ventilate. They let nice uh, natural lighting in. Um, got the big stainless sink. It's got a residential faucet. And then we move into the living room slash bedroom um, because in a, in, a, in a vehicle that is this size, if we want to have all of our furniture, so a couch, a dinette, bunks, and a bed, we have to be a little bit more creative, right? So we use a Murphy bed here. Nice couch. Um, emergency exit before we fold the bed down just quickly i want to show you on both sides we've got great hanging storage you know they even give us a little shelf above there um because there was no room for the shelf above here because of how big this bed is which is totally totally awesome you're going to see that in a sec um underneath here this is cool too so you know we all try to use this area underneath the couch for storage, right? And most of us are trying to do this and trying to get stuff in and out of there. And I say that because that's what I got to do. So this right here, look at this. Again, big drawers, useful drawers. You know, it's so much easier to use that storage space than when you have to just kind of try and work around this uh, couch. Now, uh, couch goes flat. For a lot of folks, this is the extra bed, right? And then I'm just gonna unlatch this bed. Get the other side here really quick. So it's nighttime, time to go to bed, boom. There we go. Queen bed. I mean, this is great, guys. So we call it a Murphy bed. You know, the idea being it's, it's really easy to put it out. It's kind of cool because, you know, all your bedding and stuff can just stay back there. And it's like, boom, it comes out. You make the bed in the morning, you fold it back up, you put your couch up. It's very, very easy. So. You can see why the Passport 219BH is one of our most popular sellers. Uh, it's relatively lightweight as well. I'm gonna double check the weight, you guys. Uh, this is a uh, quick demo of where to find weights on campers. Um, unloaded vehicle weight here is 4,640 pounds. You can usually find that in the door jam uh, area of a camper. So we're 4,640 pounds empty, uh, which means this can be towed by a lot of vehicles. Um, and we talked about outside how it's built and the way the axles are spaced. So if you're looking for something uh, that might tow a little bit better than something else or something that you have now, you need to check out a passport. Um, for more information, of course, you can go to our website at www.barelyrv.com. You can come in, you can call in, you can text in, you can email in. Um, we can, uh, salespeople can make videos for you, whatever you need, guys. Um, just get out, uh, just get a hold of us and, and, and make sure also that you have, like I said, follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Uh, you'll keep up with all the latest news and videos here at Byerly RV. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.